So there are people out there who tell women to choose a man who loves you more than you love him. And to a lot of people, maybe some of you, that may sound like sound advice. And the reality is a lot of women are navigating through dating and relationships, focusing on making sure he loves them more than she loves him. But I need to make it clear to you once and for all that this is horrible advice. This is a set up for disaster. And I'm going to explain why. Because I'm not going to just tell you don't do it just to not do it. No. When you really start to dig deep into this dynamic, you will see why you should not be focused on a man who loves you more. Let me start with a story. I know of a woman through coaching her where she was having struggles with dating. And one of her previous relationships was a man who she was really into, all right, and felt she was in love with. And she was really giving herself to this man and trying so hard to make it work, but he was just on some foolishness, all right? He, you know, he was lying about a lot of different things. He wasn't completely treating her the way that she wanted or needed or deserved to be treated, all right? He had his good moments, as many men do, many people do. But in the totality of the relationship, he was not the man she needed him to be. And of course, by the time this finally came to an end, because it just he, he took it to an extent of cheating and just doing things that she could not forgive. And to be honest with you, it was multiple times that he cheated. She finally let go. But of course, she was hurt by that. All right. Devastated. And in that, this is where she received the advice actually from an aunt of hers that, you know, you need to just look for a man who loves you more than, she, than you love him. And so she set out to do that. And she did it. <laughs> okay? She eventually, I want to say maybe after a year, it wasn't completely right away, but after like a year, she took some time to herself for a little bit, but then she meets a guy and she knew she wasn't really into the guy, into the guy. But there was some nice qualities about him. He was good looking. You know, she liked him, but she wasn't really into him like that. But he was infatuated with her. He was head over heels. He wanted this woman and he was doing everything he could to be with her. And so for her, you know, focusing on finding that man who loves you more, found quote unquote, I have to put a quote unquote on there, comfort and I'm going to now use the word false security. It felt like security to her at that time, but I'm going to explain why it was false security. She found this false security in this relationship and thought, okay, we, we could be good. So she gets with him. They get an official relationship. And again, for the beginning of it, he was busting his behind, doing all that he could. But eventually, that started to fade away. And at one point, he started to feel like she wasn't giving to him what he needed. Anyways, fast forward. You know, in this woman's mind... I am, I am of, even though she didn't verbalize it to him, when we spoke about it, it came out where she really felt like, you know, he's lucky I'm with him. <laughs> he, you know, he, this is really not the type of guy I would typically choose, but, you know, I'm giving him an opportunity and I feel like he's not appreciating it anymore. You know, he was trying so hard in the beginning, but now it's not there. But one of the reasons she also got with him is the idea that because she thought he should feel lucky that she, he's, she's even with him, that this man ain't going to cheat on her. He, he, he's not going to get anything as good as her anywhere else. Well, lo and behold, he cheated. And I don't mean to smile because it's not a funny or, or good situation. It's just sometimes I smile because it's just, I don't know. I don't know what else to do in some moments. But he cheated. Things went left. And let's add a little bit more to the story. Now, let me tell you more to the story. Because he cheated, and it was almost like, how could he cheat on me? And how could he cheat on me with her? It became a battle where she, it, it's almost like the tables got turned. Now she's fighting for him, 
and in essence put has ha now is putting him essentially on a pedestal because simply her pride is hurt and she's battling with this other woman. Lo and behold, as time goes on, it all falls apart. You know, it ends, it doesn't work out. But I had to explain that because now we can dissect all the things that typically go wrong with trying to be with a man who loves you more than you love him. And the first thing is, if you actually try to do that, then you are more than likely going to date down. Think about it. For you to get with a man who loves you more than you love him. So that means you have to be able to even in some way quantify in your head that he has stronger feelings for you, which essentially means you don't really have very strong, deep feelings for him. Because if you did, you wouldn't be able to say who loves who more. So when you can do that, or to even be able to achieve that, you either consciously or subconsciously will have to choose a man who is, I hate using this word, but just work with me, beneath you, all right? It's not to mean this isn't a great guy. He may be perfect for someone else, but he's not really either of your caliber or simply does not pull out of you real love and vulnerability. And so there are a lot of women, not just dating men like this, even married to men like this. And some may convince themselves that they can handle this. Well, no one's perfect. He's still a nice guy. I can make it work. I can grow to love him. <laughs> now I'm laughing at that one because that's another one I hate. I hate that this idea of growing to love them. If you even have to tell yourself, well, I will grow to love him, again, that says you are not in love with him. You're not actually there. You're hoping for things to magically work out later. And even if you want to believe that you could grow to love someone, then wait till it's actually grown before you get into an official relationship with them. All right? To do it, hoping that it happens within the process of being with them is a huge mistake. And not to deviate too far from the main topic, but one of the reasons it's a huge mistake is what happens to many women in the attempt to grow to love him is that you become more attached to him. It could be kids. It could be simply you spent all these years pouring into this relationship. Even if you weren't pouring your all, you were still giving pieces of you to him, all right? It may be now he's good with the family. Maybe you had kids. He's good with your kids. There's so many different factors that create an attachment. So now, if you were hoping that you would grow to love him and you're in year two or three and you've come to the realization, it just ain't happening. I just don't feel for him like that. But now it's, how am I going to walk away? How, how, how do I break this to the kids? How do, I, how do I do this to the kids? How do I tell my family? How do I even validate leaving this man because in these scenarios this is typically not the bad man he may not be the right man for you but he's not a bad man he's not doing anything blatantly disrespectful abusive anything that you can use and say hey this is the reason why i have to leave so now you have to find a way and that's how a lot of women feel you have to search for a way to validate leaving him and everyone on the outside is going to say to you, you're crazy. What are you doing? He's such a nice guy. He doesn't do anything wrong. I thought you guys were in love because through, throughout these two years, you're probably not going around telling people, I'm going to grow to love him. <laughs> you're, you're probably saying, I love him. So they're under the impression that everything's great. All that to say, a lot of women end up finding themselves, I hate using the word stuck, so I'm going to use the word struggling to walk away, all right? Because stuck would, would insinuate that there's no way out. And I believe there's a way out, but it's a struggle to walk away. And so that's why you, you, you don't want to go with the grow to love him. But getting back to the dating down, that's also a piece of the dating down is that as you're attempting this whole love, you know, get with the man who loves you more than you love him, you're hoping for things to really possibly materialize later or for you to be able to sustain this. And 
in, all, in my years of doing this, and, and you got to understand, I get to see relationships one year in, months in, five years in, 10 years in, and at the end when it's all done. And I have yet to see the woman who can be happy and have a fulfilling relationship over the long run in a situation like this. It doesn't happen because again, this guy isn't what you truly want. It's who you're trying to tolerate and accept to fit into this box of him loving you more than you love him for the sake of false security. But there's more. So let's think about the story I gave you. In a lot of these situations, the woman thinks this is the key to not getting cheated on, right? Because if he loves me more than I love him, and he's so into me and infatuated with all these things, well, he's not going to do that. On top of the fact that if you're, if you're viewing him as a man who's not highly desirable, because that's the thing. It's not just dating down for you. The reality is that in, in this type of situation, he's not saying he's not desirable at all, but he ain't top of the totem pole. All right? he's, he's not up there. You're not really worried about a bunch of other women getting him, which creates that false sense of security. However, what happened in that story I gave you? That tends to happen a lot. He still cheated. Now, some of you may say, oh, because he's a man. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not because it's he's a man. It's not automatic men are going to cheat. There are underlying issues that contribute to why things go this way. Yes, there are some situations out there where cheating happens because the person is just, that's how they live or they're greedy or there's just all kinds of other things. But let's ignore that for a second. Let's focus on this situation. When you get with a man who, quote unquote, loves you more than you love him, there's one of four things that's likely to happen. Either he will cheat, become toxic, become extremely unfulfilling, or flat out leave you. All right? And here is why. Because all reasons stem from the same thing. If you are getting with a man like this, Again, you're dating down, you're not really into him. Therefore, your desire to pour into him the way that he will need is not going to be there. And, and let's backtrack a little bit. Because in the beginning, what happens is in his over pursuit of trying to be with you, prove himself to you, whatever, it creates this lopsided situation where it's really him giving and pouring into you and not really requiring much of you in return because his focus is, I have to get her at all costs. I'm so happy to have her. I can't believe I got a woman like this. All that, right? But I always say, if it starts off one-sided, it's going to somehow switch to the other side at, at some point in the relationship because at some point after he gets you, the smoke clears and now his needs start to actually kick in. Now he figures, okay, well, now that we're together, all the things that I dream, because during the time he was just doing for you and, and putting it all about his efforts, he still was dreaming and fantasizing about the things he would one day get from you. But he was willing to put it on the back burner because, again, he viewed you on such a high of a pedestal. But once that's gone because he has you, all right, and not that he's no longer viewing you on a high pedestal, but now he's like, okay, where's my return on the investment? When do I now get my needs fulfilled, okay? And now that he, start to, he starts to require these things, one, you, you were never even probably in some situations, you weren't even prepared to do anything for this man, all right? You were just looking for the safety of, all right, I got a man who does for me and I'm good. But also what he's requiring of you specifically may not, it may not sit well with you. It may not be things that you like. For example, let's just say he, he wants you to cook for him all the time. And you're like, I ain't doing all this cooking. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> this, is, this is not what you put in the job description, all right? And now there's a conflict. And so now because his needs are not being met, he starts to feel devalued. He starts to feel cheated. He starts to feel like, dang, what did I sign up for? So like I said, he will start to maybe, one, act toxic. 
Toxic because he's acting out. Toxic because he's lashing out, out of frustration and resentment, all right? Maybe he starts to sense that you're not really into him like that. That also causes him to do things. For example, what's coming to mind right now, doing things on purpose to try to make you jealous, all right? Try to get a rise out of you. Because again, he's, he's not properly handling the issue. And a lot of people resort to games and tactics to try to get a reaction out of their partner. And yes, men too. So he can start to act toxic. He can, uh, again, become very unfulfilling because now that, that willingness to do for you the way that he was doing in the beginning is, is gone because he's not getting what he needs in return. So now he's not going to put as much of an effort or simply because now that he has you, he becomes comfortable, all right? And therefore, he doesn't think I have to keep putting in this work. So now he's not fulfilling you the way that you once were being fulfilled initially. And, and I, would, I would argue it wasn't really fulfillment in the beginning. It was just feeding a, a fear of yours or feeding ego. It was making you feel like, okay, it's safe here, but it really wasn't. And you couldn't see it at that time. So he's unfulfilling. He's being toxic. Yes, cheating may happen. I'm, I'm not making excuses for it. I'm not trying to validate it, but I'm explaining to you that we have to understand when there is neglect in a relationship, it can crack open the door to temptation. All right. And though you may have thought, well, he would never do this because Again, maybe he just didn't seem like that type of guy. He seemed harmless. And this is not to, uh, not, to, uh, not to take any responsibility away from him. But what I want to say is there are always women lurking. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just, it's just real. And what's, what's interesting is that what you may not realize is he may not have been the most desirable man before. But now that he got with you, you've actually made him more desirable. Because there will be other women looking like, well, if he got her, he must have something going on. Either he's paying for something, either he's laying it down. <laughs> there is something that made this woman, because they don't know the depth of why you chose this man. They will assume he must be special in some area or multiple areas. So there will be interest now being generated from other women. And now, if he is not being fulfilled and there's that void, and this is a man, let's just paint, let's just go with the idea that this is a man who is not used to getting attention from women. He may have a harder time handling it. And again, not making excuses, not saying it's okay. I'm explaining to you what does happen. So we talked about toxic. We talked about unfulfilling. We talked about cheating or he will flat out eventually leave because there's only so much a man can take. And if this situation has gone downhill, now I, I have to say, I do think, believe it or not, there are a lot of women who will deal with a toxic relationship for a long time. I, I, I would make the argument that there are a lot of them who would be quicker to just end up cheating before leaving. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. Men, like, I, I wish I had the stat in front of me, but even in divorce, even in some of, some of the horrible marriages, the majority initiators of divorce are women. So a lot of times, even when it's bad, the man does not flat out leave. All right. And again, not saying that's good or healthy. I'm just explaining to you what's going on. But that, that is one of the potential outcomes when you set yourself up for this kind of situation. And again, all of these things point to it's not worth it. You are headed down a path of destruction when you try to choose a man with this mentality. Now, I have to say real quick, you may say, well, I know women who have done this and they're looking like everything's great. One, there are always exceptions to the rule, even though I'm extremely skeptical that there are real exceptions. I think there are exceptions or there are people who present it as this is working. There are people who act like it's all good, but in reality, behind closed doors, it's everything I'm mentioning to you. But they don't want to be embarrassed by exposing that information, especially if they feel like this is a man who they, you know, dated down or whatever, and now he's doing all this stuff to them. 
they're not going to be proud to be mentioning that to family or friends. They don't want to be judged either. So a lot of you don't get to see the full story of what's going on. But even if by some chance there's a successful story out there, that's, that's one of them. I, I have to say, it's like one in a million. It's really extremely low odds. This is typically not going to work in your favor. So real quick, before we continue, be sure to get your copy of The Man God Has For You. Best-selling book, helping so many women, thousands of reviews. Women are loving it, calling it a blessing to read. Be sure to click the link in the description or in the comment section or go to themanguyhasforyou.com. So I can give you stories all day. I can break this stuff down. But what's important in understanding this dynamic is where is this really coming from? So notice in the story... And that's why I started off with it. What did I mention that led into this? She was with a man that she was really into. Whether it was real love or not, she viewed it as I gave myself to this man and I got burned. And then out of a mentality of protection, out of a mentality of fear, and also negativity poured into her because remember, it was the aunt who then advised her, choose a man who loves you more. So this advice, this, 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 this approach comes from a negative place. It is not coming from a healthy place of what is truly going to be successful and healthy, but simply what people, mainly women, you know, think will protect them from being hurt. And what I'm trying to lay out for you and show you is that this does not stop the hurt. If anything, you are guaranteed to be headed for more nonsense. It's coming. Better believe it. What you have to understand is hurt is inevitable. All right? I think as I don't know if there's a human being that has walked this earth that at some point in their life did not get hurt. This is how life is. The key is that we have to learn how to process it, handle it, heal from it, and not internalize it, hold on to it, and allow it to now project negativity and fear into our lives. Because if you are walking in fear and not faith, then trust and believe good is not going to come from that. Now, I know some of you might say, but it's too scary to put my heart out again for a man who maybe, you know, I love more. Now, first, let's address the whole you love him more. When women say to me they were dealing with a man they loved more, 99 times out of 100, if not 100 out of 100, what you're saying to me is you were dealing with a man who did not truly love you. Let me explain what I'm saying here. If this man was in love with you, and, and, and in fairness, let me, let me backtrack and say this, because I did say 99%, maybe it's not 99%. <laughs> and, and let me also mention, because sometimes there are situations where you are actually with a man that genuinely loves you, is in love with you, as you know, it, and the whole thing about who loves who more, when two people are genuinely in love with each other, you cannot quantify who loves who more. And when there's actual real connection, you cannot quantify who loves who more. However, because you can only know for sure the love you feel, it will feel like you love them more at times. Because you, you, you have to decipher what's going on with them moment to moment. And if this moment they're not doing certain things, you might say, well, do they really love me like I love them? Because you can only know yourself. But when you can say, that, that they love you more than, as I said earlier, that automatically means, all right, you're just not into them like that. You're not in love with them. That's clear cut. But anyways, you may, you may at moments feel like you love them more, but ultimately there's no way to really quantify because both parties feel deeply into each other. And yes, in some of these scenarios, a man who loves you can still make mistakes. He may still do things that hurt you, not blatantly, but because we're human and we're, and we're going to have our... Moments where we fall short. And this is why one of the things we have to understand in relationships is giving grace and understanding the difference between 
the man who's not perfect and the man who's not worth it. All right. And when he is not perfect, he is a man who is constantly trying. He's willing to talk to you. He's, he's willing to make adjustments. He's trying to get on the same page as you. The man who's not worth it dismisses your feelings, does not care, is constantly blatantly doing the wrong thing. He's not showing that kind of effort. So when we go back to the example of when women say to me, well, I, you know, they feel like they loved him more. Even though I mentioned that, yes, that can happen even in situations where y'all love each other, I will say that in most situations, it was a, a, a relationship where that man was not truly in love with her. And from, from the beginning, she saw red flags. From the beginning, there was warning signs. But whether you want to say it was love or heightened desire, her heightened desire to have him for whatever the reasons are, Maybe because she just wanted a relationship so bad. Maybe she feels like, okay, I'm getting to that age and I, I need marriage and some babies. Or may, maybe he makes a lot of money. Maybe my family likes him. There's so many reasons that can heighten the desire of a woman for a man. And it feels like love, but it really isn't. It's attachment, all right? And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when they... What I don't want to see women do is use situations where love wasn't really the driving factor there. And when things fall apart, say, well, I will not give my heart again. I, I cannot allow myself to even feel like I love this man more or I I I'm at this supreme level of love and vulnerability. No, you you've got to understand. You've got to look deeper into the situation and realize that may not have been what you thought it was. And even for the sake of discussion, it actually was, you got to heal from that. You got to release those things. You have to let go. You have to be willing to put yourself out there because if your goal is to truly have success and be happy in a relationship, you've got to be willing to put your heart out there. And listen, there are women who marry men who they may love, but they still haven't put their heart completely out there. They're still operating with guardedness. They're still operating out of fear and they don't realize they're undermining the potential of their marriage. They're undermining the potential of their relationship because they're operating in fear. And what happens to so many women, not all, but so many, is that when the woman has not healed and she's afraid to put herself out there, she will find all the reasons to run from the right man and all the reasons to run to the wrong one. The wrong one will feel like it's emotionally safe, but it's a setup for disaster. And it only feels safe because it doesn't make you feel that vulnerable. But again, you've got to embrace vulnerability at, at the fullest extent because that's where the magic happens. That's when it's really going to go to that next level. So I really, really want to encourage you, like, do not do this. It's not worth it. It's going to blow up in your face. If you see other people doing it, listen, people pay a price for these decisions. And it can get really messy when it turns into a marriage and it turns into extra kids and all this stuff. And I don't want that for you. And if you're already in that situation, I want to encourage you to take a step back. And when I say take a step back, I'm not saying immediately leave the relationship unless that's what you, in your spirit you're convicted to do. That's between you and God. But at least take a step back to evaluate what needs to be done. Maybe having an honest discussion about how you're feeling. Maybe it's possible in some situations to reach a mutual understanding. Because hell, if you haven't been happy for a long time, it's very possible he hasn't been happy for a long time. And it may be a time to where it's like, okay, maybe we need to go our separate ways because this was never built on a foundation of love. It was built on the foundation of fear. And I'm trying to help direct you into loving, fulfilling relationships. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants to feel valued in a relationship and they want reassurance that lets them know their partner feels as deeply about them as they do for their partner. But the reality is that 